family, I use notes of India. Uh, I've heard uh, when uh, I was away from India, I've heard that Indian people are one of the most intelligent people uh, on earth. But like uh, what I see that Indian youth is more promising. Uh, like uh, the way you are uh, growing, the way you are, uh, uh, especially the digital world, you are connected with. You are connected with the IT and uh, all this cyber virtuous world, and uh, the mathematics of uh, Indian people are also very famous, and it's a very place of such knowledge. But uh, there is a, a very famous, uh, or for the others, for us, infamous nuclear scientist, uh, Abdul Kadir Khan. So he's very good at mathematics. He's very good at nuclear sciences. He's very good uh, in academics, whatever he has studied. But the thing he lacks is his human part. Like he was the one who was in uh, in, in a helicopter in a helicopter, and he uh, was the one who pressed the the button. <coughs> and then a uh, nuclear blast happened in our mountains. And we, Baluch, we consider our mountains as our brothers, and we consider our soil as our mom. So uh, you can connect us because uh, uh, you are also with loyal people to your mother. Like I have heard your national anthem. So. Uh, like this brilliant Indian youth and especially uh, uh, somebody was telling me that in this institution the uh, smartest of the smart come and uh, the most intelligent people only they can reach here. So the same uh, thing that takes me that is it only career? Is it only uh, salary in many digits? It's only a, a very uh, sound and luxurious life, or your that uh, yours that uh, highest level of intelligence that you have proved to reach here? is also connected with with your human uh, part or like Dr. Kala, Dr. Kadir and, and many other uh, people in, in American uh, universities or in American research centers, they research on, uh, on biological weapons uh, or weapons of mass destruction. They are very intelligent scientists. So the thing we uh, expect from Indian youth, due to your the, the connection, your roots in one of the greatest civilizations in the world, those uh, civilizations who uh, who are emerged from peace, who are emerged from uh, dignity of humanity. So that element exists. I'm sure it exists, that connects your highest level of intelligence to the universe. Your connection to this universe, you, your connection to life. Like maybe, I, I don't know how people, everyone has its own definition, but uh, like in, in the Tata uh, Institute, uh, I was discussing the, the same that uh, for us, life is uh, everything is life. Like uh, in our textbooks, we write that uh, there are some things that are, uh, those are uh, living things and non living things. But for us, living things are life and non living things are also life because life cannot be created without those non living things, that so called non living things. So the skies and soil and wind and waters all are living. 
difficult to connect uh, both, to both your intelligence and to your human part, your uh, heart. So that heart, uh, I, I just want to, to connect you to your heart and your intelligence both at the same time. And I just need to connect it with Balichasana. It's a part that is covered by Pakistan under a black sheet of, uh, uh, of uh, like a filter that cannot be, that has no holes. No information can go out from Balochistan. And Balochistan is, uh, it, it was never on any kind of media. Even in social media, uh, there was no Balochistan like 15 years back. It's just 15 years that people started to know there's a place where, uh, where the, the extreme level of cruelty is going on. And uh, so this is uh, like we uh, share some, some common things also. Uh, one is the Mehrgar civilization, that's the, uh, the most ancient uh, urban civilization till now that has discovered. Uh, it's discovered by French archaeologists. Uh, so it's, uh, uh, it's the urban civilization near the uh, river of Molan and it had, geometry was its basic uh, character. Like uh, uh, all the shapes on the pottery, uh, we, we can see are geometrical shapes. And uh, there was a calendar, there were proto writings, and there were um, uh, kind of metals they were uh, used. And um, it was a matrilineal society. Many things were discovered there, but no weapon was discovered from Mehrgar. So Mehrgar was a, Mehrgar means place of love. And uh, it's, it was a society where there was peace and science and uh, art and uh, like the human love and relations, but there was no war. Uh, like uh, once I was in, in, I made a film on um, gender, uh, like men's issues, yeah. Like men are also, uh, um, they, some people say that, yeah, I'm a feminist, so I work for women's rights, but women cannot be free without men's freedom. So it's not that men have captured women's freedom. Men and women both are slaves of patriarchy. Men are created into tools of oppression. Militarized, macho, don't, don't cry, you're a man. And, uh, and, and you have to, to uh, earn. If you don't earn, you are worthless. And you are the protector. So it's huge responsibilities on, on men's shoulders. And uh, so that, that film was, uh, and the, the basic uh, philosophy of the film was taken from the philosophy of Mehrgar. The feminine soul exists in everyone. Like uh, you call it the Brahma, you call it uh, your Nantima and Mother Universe. And uh, so this feminine soul exists in every male, not human males, but, but animals also. You have seen any, anyone who can connect with other, who can love other, who can sacrifice for other, is the feminine soul. Who can create is the feminine soul. So it exists in every person. But from the childhood men, the boys, their feminine part is crushed, snapped, or, or killed. So any, anybody who is male or female, if she or he is cruel, means the, that feminine part, that mother universe uh, uh, part is killed. So they are not able to connect, they are not, not able to love, they have become so selfish and uh, self-centered, so they are doing such things. So a Pakistani journalist, I mean it's very difficult for Pakistani people to digest that Baloch can be civilized. 
because in their textbooks they write that Manoj uh, are uh, uncivilized people. They just know, uh, they know war, they know uh, fighting, and they don't have anything. It's a barren land they have. Like they make us others. They make us uh, less, lesser humans. Then they can justify their own people to kill us, to, to rob us, whatever they are doing. So, um, so a Pakistani journalist, uh, he was uh, uh, like the, the film show was in Lahore. At that time, we were able to move in Pakistan. So uh, the journalist asked me that how you can say that there is no civilization. Maybe you Baluch people, uh, you have you are, you are just you 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 are you have come from somewhere else. So I said, uh, do you have any um, proof? So carbon dating is a proof. Uh, they can be genetic tests. They can be proof. But Mirgar is the heart of civilization. Even a person living in Maharashtra can be connected. Can have same genes of Mirgar. Anybody can have. Because 12,000 years before, there was a civilization and it emerged and it, uh, it uh, like uh, uh, disseminated throughout the world. So it's a human heritage. It's not only my heritage, but uh, like uh, luckily uh, I I just showed I I got the idea and I showed like this. I said, yeah, this is Mirgar. The pottery, uh, the designs of Mirgar 12,000, 11,000 years ago, same we have now, till now, on uh, on our dresses, on our men's caps. So the women have preserved it. We, 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 we had no computer, we had no um, painting uh, things, we, we have nothing. But we had thread and we had uh, the needle and all the geometry you see it's all geometry so all the geometrical designs of Mirgar are still alive on our presence so it means we have not come from somewhere and invaded like Hans we are sons and daughters of Mirgar and it's not only we it has spread it all around you know we have many common words with Tamil and Telugu, Telugu and Marathi and Kundi so look at Middle East Kurd and look at uh, South India and look at Balochistan. So we have common words, we have common vocabulary. <laughs> so human civilization is not, uh, it, it, it has same roots. So that civilization had another characteristic that is alive, not only its designs, but its psyche of peace and pluralism. So in our society, uh, there was a time when we had uh, problems from our neighbors, especially from our Western neighbors, uh, so uh, the Persians, and they were invading uh, the lands and uh, controlling, uh, and uh, like Mongols, they were coming and controlling and all this. So uh, at that time, uh, a religion came uh, a call came from uh, Arab that uh, accept our religion, this is the message. And we were Zoroastrians and Hindus before that. So the, the Baloch uh, elders, they sat together and said that uh, Arab and Ajam always have a fight. Ajam means Persia and Arab, they have a fight on. So Arab is not killing us, it's a little away from us, but Persia is killing us every day, they are invading us and we have fights, they want to occupy us. So it was a political decision of Baruch people that, okay, let's join them against them. So it was uh, like, still we have our Zoroastrian and Hindu roots alive. So we have our mandirs, our temples, our gurdwaras alive. We protect them. And we have our Hindu Baloch, our Sikh Baloch, they live with us. We live with them like we live together. But what happens, 
uh, they was like last thousand years were the years of invasions on this land in the name of religion in the in, in other different names but religion was used like uh, there was uh, an attack from an Afghan on uh, Somna, the temple of Somna. So people asked uh, that, uh, that why on Somna? He said uh, it's a it's a uh, statue and uh, puja of a statue is against Islam. So that's why uh, Mahmud Ghazdavi broke. It. So the question is. That was a small statue or uh, what you call it? Shivling. But there was a big statue, the biggest in the world, uh, Buddha statue in Afghanistan, in Bamiyan. That was broken now in Taliban era. So why it was not broken at that time? It was near. Ghazni and Bamiyan are just, uh, if they go on horse, they can reach in two days. But they came here to Somna because it was made of gold. There was a lot of gold here. So religion is always used to rob. So our culture, Baloo's culture, nobody occupied us, but we used some, some, some kind of wisdom in saving us because we are small population, we live in a very hard terrain. So we call mountains our brothers because they protect us like brothers. So we have the mountains. So ye jo, uh, uh, what happened uh, when British came? So we had uh, fight. We had uh, uh, like uh, against Mongols we protected Balochistan. Against Portuguese they came to save Gwadar be protected and then British came and British got defeated at uh, in 1928 it was fight of uh, battle of Nafus uh, and uh, they got defeated and then after that they made conspiracy and they uh, tried to bribe the tribal chief and then they entered and they just made some treaties at his, uh, with Baloch government. But Pakistan is the country, the artificial country that created by British just to weak India. They, they didn't want to leave India as a huge country, a huge power. They, they could understand that if they leave India like, like they came, so it will become a, a world power. So they made, they uh, planned for 100 years and like they, they, uh, they materialized their plans for 100 years to break India in different uh, uh, pieces uh, horizontally, uh, vertically or and horizontally both. Like in uh, uh, dividing Indian lands into different countries and then dividing Indian uh, uh, Indian nation into different uh, kind of classes and religion and all this. So they played, they played very well and there were many Indians also who who, were, who still have uh, a very high respect in Indian society, but they actually played for them, not rock for India. And India is paying back. Uh, I'm not supposed to talk uh, about Indian internal issues, but I just remember because their pro-British <coughs> play actually uh, played against Baluchistan also. So uh, they supported Pakistan, they supported division of Pakistan, uh, like division of India, so it will be easy for them to, to take Indian power, to control Indian power and give power to, to Jinnah and his allies and make British happy, what British plan was. But that happened that after one year of Pakistan's creation, Pakistan attacked on Baluchistan and Baluchistan, free sovereign country, was occupied by Pakistan because British not only well planned in, in weakening India, but they also well planned in, in weakening uh, Balochistan. They uh, divided Balochistan into, into like vertically and horizontally. They were very successful in that. 
So, like Pakistan not only exploited Balochistan's resources, but they tried to do a cultural invasion on Balochistan. They tried to show our youth that we are uh, people with uh, like uncultured people, uncivilized people. We should learn from uh, Punjabis or Pakistanis and uh, who, who don't have their own national anthem in their own. Okay, if the national anthem is in Punjabi, it makes a sense because Punjabis are ruling Pakistan. But national anthem is in Persian. Nobody in Pakistan speaks Persian, but their national anthem is in Persian. Their religious practices is in Arabic, in Arabic. Their uh, uh, official pros procedures, processes, they are in English. And they say that they are the champions of culture and we should learn from them. So this was a cultural invasion. There was a psychological war to snub our youth, to snub our people and, and throw us into inferiority complex to make it uh, 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 easy to enslave us. And then they kept us uh, away from knowledge, away from education, away from infrastructure. They just came, uh, looted, robbed our gold and our gas and our oil and our minerals. Uh, and and they, they just, they said everything that is grown on the soil is of provincial government. And the thing that is under the ground is central government. So means, Whatever Punjab has, it's theirs. What we have, it's also for Punjab. So with Bangladesh, they did the same. They said that the the uh, uh, budget will be divided, development budget will be divided according to land, not population. So they made uh, Western uh, uh, Pakistan and Eastern Pakistan. So Eastern Pakistan had huge population. But they took all the budget because they have huge land and the huge land, 50% of that huge land was Balochistan. But Balochistan was never given a share of it. So this kind of policies they made and Bengalis are the people who had, who uh, like the, the British succeeded uh, in dividing India on the basis of religion first in Bengal. I, I don't know who, somebody knows the date. 19 of five. Oh. Uh, Lord Kurzawa. Yeah. And then there was a massive agitation against it. Yeah. So that was the creation of Pakistan actually. 19 of five. And then Muslim League was found there. And then uh, uh, Pakistan's uh, passion was most prominent there. Not in the present Pakistan. In the present Pakistan, there was no Pakistan. So, Bengalis uh, played in the uh, in the like uh, uh, played for for British uh, conspiracy, and what happened that when Pakistan created Bengalis, uh, they faced the worst kind of discrimination, and then they decided to leave Pakistan, and India helped them uh, to be a free country. The left of the West Pakistan. So 50% of that land mass belongs to Balochistan. 93% of its coastline is Balochistan, directly percentage of sin. That connects with Mumbai. Same they did with us. They changed our, uh, our names of our places. Still Pakistan is uh, They are changing names of our mountains. They are changing names of our places giving uh, Arabic names. So Punjabis are giving Arabic names to Baluchistan. So always they do funny things. This, uh, uh, this kind of, uh, like China, I also uh, want to discuss here the role of China in the situation of Baluchistan. Uh, China is a direct partner or now it has become 
uh, the, the biggest financer and uh, the biggest supporter of Baluch genocide by Pakistan army. They are providing uh, not, not only moral support to Pakistan to crush Baluch, but they are supporting the arms, ammunition, and trainings. In 1958, one of my uncle was uh, in a Pakistani torture cell, and uh, he saw a Chinese doctor there in 1958. A Chinese doctor was there, and at that time, Pakistan was showing itself a very close ally of America. And look at their smartness that they take American dollars as rain and they play under, uh, under the table, they, they play for China. Same they did. So the Chinese presence in Balochistan was first uh, uh, like observed there uh, in 1958 and this was the time that they were, uh, they, there was a war against Balochistan, Baloch people, they were killing us and China was uh, doing a survey of gold mines. So then China started uh, their nuclear program there. China started their, uh, their contract, they got the contract of gold mine there. China uh, started uh, Gwadar mega project to, to enter the Indian Ocean to uh, uh, land route. So all this China is doing and Baloch people are always protesting against it. And all the time when China comes with, a, with an intervention, there is a new war on Baloch people from Pakistan. So they keep us busy in the war and they do their cat work under, under the, uh, uh, like without noticing everybody. People are in fight, media is uh, blackout. Every, everybody is silent, it's a it's matter of national security, you, you don't have to talk about Pakistan. So the people of Pakistan are also kept into a, 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 a scene of uh, like uh, silence. They are not supposed to talk. If they talk, they will, uh, they will face that uh, allegations and punishment of anti-state activities. I have 23 cases of, uh, of, of Pakistan against me on like my um, work, uh, like I'm, uh, my activities are anti-state, anti anti-Pakistan. So uh, I take it as medals. But uh, this is the situation now that uh, if you uh, study the United Nations definition of genocide, the all eight to ten indicators of genocide you can observe, you can apply what Pakistan is doing in Pakistan. So they have, uh, they have, like you have seen films of uh, uh, rompies. There's a kind of film that there are people who have, who, who get a virus hmm. and then people kill them. Zombies. 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 Yeah, zombies. So they have created our image as zombies. So we are the people who deserve to be killed. Otherwise, our virus will, will get there. Because and, and role of Pakistani civil society, like Pakistan is a country that is that is to serve army. It's Pakistan army that is controlling the whole country. It's it's controlling the whole uh, GDP of Pakistan. It's controlling the whole uh, the institutions, the institutions like uh, judiciary, media, parliament, uh, administration. Every institution in Pakistan is just a puppet of military, and the institution itself that exists in Pakistan is just Pakistan military. Pakistan army is the only institution they have. Others are just slaves. So they have their own economy. They have their own uh, uh, their own mills. You, you will see sugar mills, army sugar mills, Fauji Foundation, their own schools, their own universities. They, the best, expensive, most expensive lands of Pakistan are owned by Pakistan Army. So they have they control every kind of. Uh, and if you see if there is any kind of. Um, earthquake or there is a flood, 
international community have come to help them, there is only Pakistan army who takes that millions of dollars. And what they do is just kidnapping the women, raping the women or, or victims of earthquake. It's, it's a report that in KPK, the, uh, the north frontier province of uh, the, the Pakhtun dominated province, they had uh, earthquake and what Pakistan army did there. You can see it if you Google. So uh, this Pakistan army is there. It's also controlled by a, a, a claim of uh, generals that and, and those who think that they will be generals, generals and generals to be, and they all have their uh, banks, bank accounts, foreign bank accounts. They have their foreign property. Their children, their families live out of Pakistan. So they use Pakistan just as their colony. <coughs> they just earn from Pakistan. They don't think that it's a country. And if it's a failed, people say it's a failed state. It's not a state. It's a so Pakistan army, what is their economy basically is terror. They create terror. They recruit young boys from the very uh, poor areas and they brainwash them in the name of religion. They make them human bombs and then they are used as, as Pakistan. This is the production. The Pakistani uh, industry is creating terror and this terror is exported all around the world, especially to Balochistan, Afghanistan, and India. So this is uh, like uh, after the the uh, CPAC, the China Pakistan Economic Corridor, Pakistan and China's atrocities in Balochistan have uh, have reached its level. Like they come, especially the route of CPAC, they have displaced all Baluchs from there. They like they uh, forcefully, they have burned all the villages. They looted, they robbed all the, all the valuable things. They killed uh, children and old people. They took young women and men. Young women, they, they never, uh, nobody saw them. They had their real sense. And uh, maybe they are uh, selling them to Arab sheikhs or somewhere. But the, the young men, their bodies sometimes are thrown and the bodies are uh, like uh, their organs, their vital organs are removed, their eyes, heart, uh, their lungs, their kidneys. They take all the uh, organs for organ selling, organ trade, and they even the blood is taken. So they take the blood also and they just throw the body. Sometimes they um, they have used chemical chemicals on the faces of uh, our uh, people's uh, bodies, so nobody can recognize. So it, they give us a pain that yes, there's a body, but nobody knows. Like from every home, people have, uh, uh, they have taken people, abducted, missing people is a big issue in Balochistan. So every day they are picking up our uh, young boys and girls. But uh, it's a pain for us that nobody knows this body is whose. And mass graves, there are mass graves, around 100 mass graves. And uh, in each market, mass grave, there are more than 100 people, including children. And uh, doctors, according to doctors' uh, uh, opinion, they were buried there, they are alive. So this is the level of atrocities they are doing. They are bombing through jets. They are killing people. And uh, they, they are involved in many kind of uh, uh, human flesh trade. So this is the situation, and um, like uh, in 19, February 1948, the, the head of uh, House of Common of Balochistan, the head of Lok Sabha came and met Nehruji, and uh, told him that if Pakistan will occupy us, that is, Pakistan is trying to occupy us, if they will occupy us, they will become a problem for you. So, and that's happened. So after so many years, I'm here 
and after like a gener whole generation we have lost, I'm here and just I'm raising the question that if at that time India, uh, we were not expecting India to, to send their armies, but just India, if India raised its voice at international <coughs> level that Pakistan has no right to pressurize Balochistan to, to merge in Pakistan on the basis of religion. Because they said that you should merge in, in, in Pakistan because we, we both are Muslim countries. They said, no, we are not a country. Our, our country has no religion. And if in the name of religion a country can be merged into another country, so Pakistan should merge into Saudi. Or Pakistan should merge into Iran. Why Pakistan uh, keeps its identity? So a religion cannot be a justification for a country. A country has, can have any justification but not religion. So this, this is like in the last seven decades, India has faced a, a huge loss from Pakistan. And this loss is not only your, your, your Jawans uh, got martyrdom through Pakistan, why Pakistan uh, There are attacks, uh, open attacks in, like in India. They have also fragmented your like fabric of Indian society in the name of religion. One classmate is insecure from the other classmate. One neighbor is insecure from the other neighbor in the name of religion. Who has done this? It's the same hatred that is the base of Pakistan. Pakistan is created on the base of hate. And in their textbooks, they start their textbook books against Hindu. Creation of Pakistan. Pakistan was created because Hindus were bad people, they were very cruel people, and they didn't let us practice our religion. But more Muslims, many times more in, than Pakistan, live in India, and they live a better life than Pakistanis. So, uh, like I will repeat what I uh, uh, just. Um, that Pakistan is, the ideology of Pakistan is to hate Hindu. And the Muslims of uh, India are also, for them, they are Hindus. Even the Muslims of India, if they go to Arab, they call them Hindi. So, Hind is the, or India is the basic identity. Somebody loves you or somebody hates you, but your identity is India, not religion. So the, this base of Pakistan is creating hate in your own society and creating a sense of insecurity in Indian society. So like it's a question that these 70 years, Pakistan has given plenty of opportunities to get correct. I have seen many times uh, your uh, women in your civil society, these people with candles on Wagga border and all this. But what they have given, Uri attack and Taj attack and now they have uh, given so many Jawans, Shahid. And the way they kill Indians, like they mutilate uh, the bodies. And they do same with Balu. So I'm here after seven decades that let's rethink. Let's rethink that Pakistan is not going to be correct. How much you are nice people, how much you are civilized people, you, you know that your land is divided 
on the base of hate and Pakistan, the day they leave their ideology of hate, there will be no Pakistan. They know it. 80 to 90 percent of Pakistani budget is used on army, on military, just because they make their people insecure of India. If they make friendship with India, how they will do this? And then they have brought China on Indian borders. So from one side, China is uh, is like. Uh, I don't say that the the, the Maoist movement or, or the movements, I, I don't say anything against any movement, but any place that has connections, any movement that has connections with China, there is need to, to further go there and meet with the people and talk to your, your own people that China or this Maoist movement, this Maoist ideology, if they cannot give freedom to Chinese, to own Chinese, how they can, they can, they are concerned about Indian people's rights. So, same is with Pakistan. Pakistan is so much concerned about Kashmir. But what they are doing in, in their occupied they are killing Kashmiris. Kashmiris are harassed and became hostages there by three kinds of militarization. The United Nations have declared that Kashmir should be a military free region. So Pakistan has brought Chinese military there. Chinese boots are in Kashmir, Gilgit Baltistan. Chinese uh, and Pakistani boots are there. And then the, their uh, religious extremist groups are there. They are also terrorizing Kashmiri people. So this kind uh, uh, of militarization in Kashmir. So how they can, the, they are the people who are responsible for killing of 300,000 Bengali Muslims. And uh, 100,000 women uh, became pregnant out of Pakistan army's rapes in Bengal. And 400,000 Afghan Muslims were killed by Pakistan during the last 30 years of war uh, against Soviet Union. And 200,000 Baloots are killed by Pakistan. If not Muslims, Hindu and Muslim, both Baloots were killed. So how Pakistan can be a champion of rights of Muslims of India? So the ugly face of Pakistan should be known to each and every Indian. And this is the time to think for some solutions for South Asia. The British plan, they got failure, like two nations theory, it got failed. So Pakistan needs a strong kind of uh, solution. So uh, what can be the solution, I leave it on you. But terror is their asset. They export terror. They live on it. And they get money from the world for war in that context. So, um, from Baluchistan, it's a message for you that Baluch people, we love Indian people. Maybe for you, Baluchistan is a forgotten place, but India is not a forgot forgotten place for Baluch because we have common roots. And we have uh, sometimes, like, our many of our young Baluch are tortured and killed by Pakistan army just because they were celebrating Indian cricket team's victory. So they were uh, distributing sweets. They were dancing on the roads that India won. And Pakistan army uh, like caught them, took them, tortured them, and their bodies were thrown at 
it was written, carved by the knives, Pakistan, Zindabad. So this is the way they can keep their country alive on our news chest because they celebrate Indian teams uh, with me. And especially the, the Indian intervention, the largest Indian intervention outside India is also on the Luch land. It is in Chaba. So the Chaba uh, mega project and Zaranj Dilaram road, it's uh, like more than 1,000 kilometers, it goes uh, on Baloch land. And Baloch people are very happy, and Baloch people welcome uh, India. We know that when China came with, uh, uh, joined hands with Pakistan on Gwadar uh, port, we knew that they are coming here to kill us, to eradicate us uh, from the land. But we know that India, when India is there, our rights are reserved, protected, and uh, India will respect the international law, the UN declaration, UN convention on the rights of indigenous people. And uh, we give surety to Indian uh, people, Indian youth, that we will protect, we will protect uh, your uh, investment and we expect that the bright Indian youth will come there and share their experiences with Baluch youth and they will learn the, uh, the scientific uh, world, they will get connected with you. So we are very happy for that. And another thing is uh, a promise I always make uh, in Varanasi uh, when I was there. So it's also the world's uh, oldest living city and uh, it's a very beautiful Ganga's civilization. So uh, the Hinglaj Mata is uh, the forehead of uh, Hinglaj Mata was dropped in Baluchistan and it's a very sacred soil of uh, Baluchistan, because there is a, a Sufi place also there, a Muslim Sufi place. Sufis are not Muslims or Hindu. Sufi has no religion actually. Uh, but like uh, the Muslim Sufis, when they reach the at the highest level of their uh, Sufi uh, Sufism, they have to visit once that place is called Rahmat Ramadan. So that place and Hinglaj Mata both are on the same. Land. And uh, like we will, uh, we welcome you one day. Indians will come there for Hinglaj uh, Mata. Mata technically, jab aap udar aayenge, so Baluch people will welcome you. Abhi bhi Baluch people protect all the uh, pilgrims who come there. And it's another allegation on us that you are raw people because uh, you why you protect Hindus when they come there. So you give them, give them visa, when they enter Baluchistan, it's our uh, responsibility, it's our culture, uh, it's, it's our honor, it's dishonor for us that if somebody in Baluchistan will get hurt. And uh, we respect because uh, Nani is our mom also. And when somebody respects Nilaj uh, uh, Mata, so we respect them. So like you will come there without any visa in Baluchistan, will be a free country. And uh, so this was your heart part uh, to, to, to be connected with Baluchistan and your highest intelligence that is famous uh, in the world that please think that uh, with your capabilities, with your intelligence, with your skills, how we can make this subcontinent, this region and the world uh, a, worth, a worthy place to live with peace and happiness for all, all living and non living. Things. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ila, Professor Ila, for enlightening us and, uh, on, and understanding, making us understand the issue of Pakistan, human rights, and we started with the genesis of how. The civilization is old, so it created a root 
to understand the very next topic now, the very civilization which uh, had uh, such a history. Now, how the things are getting worse due to the political economy of Chinese and Pakistani army, and they are making it worse. Please leave human by violating every human rights, every citizen's human rights. So, quick questions if you want to share something or you want to ask something on any topic, then please do three questions you can take. Anything? I'm here. Just morning, I can ask. Because you are leaving. Please. Uh, do you think, uh, like, at least a good number of people sitting in the hall started hearing about Balochistan and the atrocities which are happening in Balochistan? Uh, since the last year or so. So do you think there is an increase in attention which Baruchistan is getting just primarily because India is changing its stance on, on in the context of Baruchistan. Baruchistan even got a mention in the Independence Day speech of a Prime Minister. So do you think that increase in attention is going to change the equation uh, in Baruchistan, if not an active military intervention, which I don't think is, is, is going to be feasible in, in, in the near future? Just the, the focus which is being uh, showered on Balochistan and international forums. Do you think that can change the equations drastically? Uh, and if any other questions, if you are having. Uh, uh, I, I'll answer this to the question. So, uh, yeah. When Modi ji, uh, like he spoke for Balochistan, it gave us a huge uh, attention in the world. And uh, yes, uh, it, it gave us uh, spirits, high spirits. Especially uh, like uh, always when, uh, like my husband was in a torture cell, same torture cell my uncle was in 1958. My husband was in, in the same torture cell uh, in uh, 2007. And the same uh, allegation was there that you are Indian agents. So uh, people always uh, said that always we have uh, allegations that we are working on Indian agenda because we are asking for our rights, our independence. But this is the first time India stood for us. So it is a kind of relief because we never uh, done, we have never done anything for India, to be very clear. We did it for our own rights. We never had any support from India, even moral support. We never had. But it was an allegation. So this time when uh, Prime Minister, your Prime Minister, very kindly and generously and very uh, courageously he, uh, he spoke for Balochistan. <laughs> it gave, you know, a step back to Pakistan. So that's why people say that it's the rule, it's the law of attraction, that always say good things, always expect good things. When you will say wrong things, they can be happen. Because the universal energies, they may change for that. So it's Pakistan actually always say raw, raw, raw. India, India, India. Now India is standing. And um, military intervention, we uh, don't expect military intervention from India. But yes, we need cyber intervention. Yeah. And, and we need military intervention of India for Indian lands. Your lands occupied by Pakistan. But we, will, we can match the dates. <laughs> so, but how do you protect the border? Suppose we <coughs> match your date, yeah. but how do you protect your border with Pakistan? Do you have enough uh, military or do you have preparation yeah. for that? Yeah, we are prepared. Like from the day one, we are always prepared. Yes. Yes. Oh. Yes. We are always prepared because it's our culture that each and every baloot when we are born, uh, from the laps of our, our moms, we are trained and we are uh, prepared to protect, to stand for our uh, national rights. 
but at the same time we are connected with the humanity also. It's not um, racism. It's not uh, uh, jobinism. It's our right, like anybody has the right to live peacefully in his or her home. But it doesn't mean that they are disconnected from their neighborhood or their family, extended family. So the world is like we are extended family of each other. So we are connected and we are prepared. So when we will um, uh, match the dates, uh, we can also uh, invite Afghanistan to match the dates. I have worked there for four years. I have met their youth uh, in universities. I have met the uh, army. I have met their uh, women movement, women's movement and uh, their tribal elders. So I've, uh, I, I have done a, a lot of you know, brainstorming and sharing of ideas and all this. They are also ready because they are fed up. They can't <laughs> live in peace. Like every Afghan, when they leave their home, they don't know uh, they will come back home uh, safe or alive. Because every day they are blast suicide attacks, suicide attacks. So same is in Baluchistan, they have been, they killed 100 lawyers, 100 Baluch lawyers, lawyers at one day, in one day, and 57 Baluch police officers in one attack. And the people come from Pakistani uh, cantonments, they do their work, and some get killed there, and if somebody survives, they go back in the Pakistani cantonments. And uh, after a few hours, the uh, Daesh, the IS, IS uh, uh, formal uh, uh, office, they from their formal websites, they take the responsibility. So look at the connection of ISIS and ISI. Yeah, uh, if you can.